Um, one of the key tenets of permaculture is that in order to get some sense of how to meet our needs in the landscape and still care for the land, we need to know what the land needs. And observation really is, is the foundation upon which everything we do in permaculture is based. And that's a continual process. It's not a case of going out and saying, we've looked at it and now we understand it because the landscape changes and there's always something new to see. The more I learn and the more I apply, the more I realise how important observation is. And at every stage, not just at the beginning, we think, OK, observation is something you do at the start of a design cycle, but actually it's all the way through. To be able to understand you know, the situation you're in and what your needs and your constraints and your resources are on one side and then what the land is telling you um, in terms of the site that you're on, if it's a land-based design, um, I think I think there's you know you can never do too much observing. What I love about observation is that I'm still learning how to do it, you know, and I've been doing it for nearly 20 years. And everywhere new that I go, I learn something. I learn something about uh, different landscapes, and that's for me it's exciting because it means that I there's still a lot for me to learn. With Applewood here, we've got 20 acres of you know, huge variety of places, uh, lots of microclimates, lots of slope, lots of, lots of different habitats, and there's so much to observe. It's one thing to read it in a book and say, we just do this, but actually to go through the process with somebody and see that it's not that, it's not that scary, you know, and if you make a map and it's not that great, so what? You know, you learn by doing. One of the key outputs of observation is, is or one of the ways of recording it is on maps and so it seemed sensible to have an observation with a mapping course to look at um, uh, increasing those two skills in particular. Tape measures are useful because they can give us some real accuracy when things matter on smaller spaces but actually when you get out into the larger landscape even simple things like measuring things with paces um, is incredibly accurate. And then the simple tools like the A-frame that you can literally just go into the woods and cut a few bits of hazel or whatever you have, um, get a string or a vine if you don't have string and tie a rock on the end. And with a few moments calibration, which is again something that people often don't understand, but it's quite simple to teach. You've got yourself a tool that will show you the level in the landscape. And that's, you know, that's a really important thing because once you know what's level, you can then work out where water flows. But it's also useful to know how to use um, some kind of more high tech tools and um, I'm particularly, I like some of the apps I have uh, on my phone. In fact, I don't really use it much as a phone. It's more as a surveying little computer, um, including things like, um, you know, we're here now in October, but we can very quickly dial up what's the sun's path in the middle of December. And that can tell us um, when we go somewhere for the first time, particularly if we're thinking of buying somewhere, what is it going to be like in the middle of winter? It looks great now, but how will it be when the sun is lower in the sky? And, so those are particularly useful tools as well, I find. Mapping is a, also a, a really useful skill to have. Um, and a lot of people have a block, a blockage about, about making maps. It's interesting. Uh, there's many levels of making maps, very simple ones that you can use hand tools or just pacing, you use your own body to make maps. And there's then higher tech stuff using apps and using um, drones. Drones are great in that they only require enough power, power to take a camera up in the air. It's not like having a helicopter uh, just to carry a camera. You know, literally, it is a tiny camera helicopter and you just put it up and it gives you a whole new perspective and you can see what's going on. And much better detail than, for instance, you know, your Google or your Bing maps, the aerial maps that only have a certain resolution. Now we're kind of, we've been here over a year so we have been through the seasons and now we're looking at observation plus ideas of things that could happen and still finding new places on the land and thinking oh well now I need to start a year from now for this place. The views are beautiful but you can go down to the, the pool at the bottom. There's lots of wildlife as you can hear in the background. Um, beautiful trees, lots of great facilities. Yes, who's the course for? Well, um, essentially anybody who's interested in making maps, whether they have no idea what permaculture is or they're wanting to polish their map making skills, maybe they started a bit on their permaculture design course, or people who are doing their diploma and really wanting to get a, a clearer idea of some of the finer details of things. You know, 
essentially it's going to be all of those things and we're working to whatever level that people are, are at at the moment.